Yes, Officer Ellis, may I have your badge number? 10637. Okay. Well, I tried to get a protection order from this law firm, and they said that I needed more evidence. Mm -hmm. So I was finally allowed to report stalking without getting violated, arrested, or bullied, or detained the other day, which is mm -hmm. new for me. Okay, so anyway, am I allowed to report it? Because I know you guys have been doing everything you can to protect this guy. So am I allowed to report getting harassed by him? Uh, he has a lot of people that he claims uh, are supposed to be his followers that harass me, text me, call me, threaten me. For a lot, I mean, it is hard to report because seeing how the last time I tried to report the abuse in Garland, they had Motel 6 to 90 services. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. What's your name? It's Kiana. What? Kiana. Kiana. Right. Kiana. Yes. What's your last name? Clark. Kiana Clark. Now, you calling up here every week about the same thing. Well, I thought if you're not tampered with evidence, when there's new evidence, you report it. But when, I mean, it's not my fault that you guys are committing felonies. I should have a right to report crimes every day that they're committed to me. Why would you give me a cap? Miss Clark, now I know you over there recording on your phone and gonna put this on your YouTube page. It's um, incredible, sir. I mean, how can you rationalize tampering with evidence as a felony? Because it's a crime being com committed every week. Why are you denying the 60 something investigations? No, I'm still getting. I See, you're too busy covering, sir. I'm getting threatening and harassing texts. You called up here about something happening on dark. This is a disconnect with every officer I speak with. I don't know why this happens. I just got some call, uh, some texts from people I believe that know Jason. If you guys stop handcuffing me and violating me and listen, then you can obtain evidence. If you investigated the 60 something report, where's good and she has the harassment case. She said she hadn't didn't have enough evidence, but she ducked and dodged me. Maybe if you stop handcuffing me, we can find out what's going on with this innocent man. You can, we need, he got a restraining order. And I haven't seen him since 2018, but some kind of way all his followers keep harassing me and I still have strange things going on and can't use my phone properly and I'm getting blacklisted from services and CPS is still lying and people are still enforcing that I don't see my daughter and they did it with my son. And I have multiple false arrests that people keep on, uh, will not give me education on and I've never been, uh, I don't know a lot of people that were, their right to go to court was taken away. It's still going on. I don't appreciate almost getting ran over by a bus and then going trying to report it and getting arrested. I don't know why you guys deny the 60-something reports to show all this chaos I've been, I've been going through, the investigation for that. So my question is, if I come in there and show you these harassing ticks, because I need a, more evidence for me to get the protection order. He got his some kind of way, but he's never been handcuffed at the FBI and ran off roads. You there? I'm here, man. It's going to make it a lot um, really difficult if you guys keep covering for his crimes. So I just want to know before I come in and get violated, can I report it? How are you going to be violated? I'm, I'm trying to figure that out. Okay, may perhaps you didn't hear me. Like when I went to the FBI to report you guys and him, I was handcuffed. When I started the civil case at the Northern District Court, the same chaos, they tried to give me a criminal trespass and threaten me at the Northern District Court. When I was at the support group in Garland and um, got arrested and assaulted there. At Red Roof Inn, when I was just on my phone begging for help, and then they showed up in the scheme there to let me know that I was getting stalked and monitored on my phone. Because they just all I did was call for help in the hotel room. They showed up from nowhere. I did not call them in a the scheme and told the hotel to put me out. And then arrested me and assaulted me because they didn't have the answers on why they were there in the first place. The only thing that I can uh, come come to, uh, you know, that I could believe is that they heard me on my phone and didn't like the fact that I was begging for help. And they just showed up on their own because I believe that I was getting monitored and stopped. But, you know, one would ever believe that. So I imagine you can get away with that for a long time. 
But here's the thing. I need evidence to get the protection order. And when I tried to get the protection order at the Frank Crowley, police pushed and shoved me in at the George Allen, saying I didn't have enough evidence prior to me completing the protection order. So, like I said, it'd be a lot easier if I wasn't getting violated trying to get the evidence. So, if I come in and show you the evidence, what am I gonna, are they going to say, are you taking medication? Are they going to ask me if I want to hurt myself? And why would you do all this for this innocent man? Why don't you just investigate him and clear his name? That's fine. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I hear you talking right now. The only thing is, see, I'm new to all of what's going on with you and where you No, because I just told you. You have a responsibility as a police. I just told you everything that was going on. So you were uh, informed. Speaking to you, Ms. Clark, so I'm new to everything that's going on. I don't know what pertains between you and him and what's going on, okay? You give me your side of the story, he can give me a different side of the story of what's going on, okay? I just might say a simple question. Is it going to be like it is, was in the past? Are they going to ask me about if I'm on med- medication, detain me, arrest me for trying to report him? That's a simple question because I got some texts that I believe he's behind. The attorney that denied me services, like the multiple other attorneys that have been denied me services for some reason, maybe it be- it's because I believe that there's a conspiracy to violate my civil rights. Maybe that's what's going on. Maybe someone is going behind me and enticing all these businesses to den- deny me services and criminal activity. The reason why I believe that is because you guys used to show up in the beginning. That's how you showed up at the domestic violence support group and gave me a criminal trespass and arrested me from there. In Plano, all over. But when you incriminated yourselves, then you started enticing the businesses to do it. That's a crime. That's why you want to investigate yourselves. But anyway, nonetheless, they told me that I needed to get more evidence for the protection order. So I'm getting all these texts from people that know him. Is that a crime? If he uh, is, if I'm claiming he's stalking me, and I get these texts from people that know him, mm-hmm. and the laws that I read that that's part of the harassment and stalking, and that could be investigated. Well, last time you talked to a police, well, I know you talked to a police regularly. When's the last time you got a report? Yesterday, but I'm getting these texts today, and you guys need evidence. And Tiffany won't invest. Uh, Tanya Gooden won't investigate the harassment case that she has, and keeps saying that I she have, won't have evidence and won't take any. Ms. Clark, have you talked, okay, so you mean that you already talked to an uh, officer, they gave you a report, correct? Right, but I thought if you weren't tampering with evidence and when there was a new event and you okay. weren't tampering with evidence, you were supposed to report the new events to the police. But police are dishonest with me because they're covering for him and don't want them me giving evidence. So it's kind of hard because we're working against the grain each other. It's not supposed to be that you cover for him and then won't allow me to report crimes. I'm supposed to be able to freely walk into a police department and let the police know that I'm getting stopped and violated and show ticks and not get arrested, detained, and handcuffed. So I do have new evidence. Am I going to get violated showing the new evidence is the question. All right, so Ms. Clark, my understanding is the officers, a couple of officers that already initiated a report. Right, but I'm trying to show new evidence. Is there a cap at reporting crimes? Clark, I, have got, I got new texts, which are evidence. Ms. Clark, uh, can, can, you, can you let me stop with this one moment now? I, I hear what you're saying, but I like to report the new evidence, which is supposed to happen when you're not tampered with evidence. Okay. Because I'm told that I need new evidence. So if you are denied it consistently and want to investigate the 60-something reports and committing crimes to keep me from reporting, so why would you try to lead me astray? If I have new evidence and text, why would you not want me to report that and try to cover for Clark. it and commit a felony? It's Sir. It's Sir. Sir. I don't know who you guys, I don't know who would believe this chaos, but go ahead. All right. If you allow me to talk, I can explain to you. Okay, so I understand that there was been a couple of officers that already taken down the report. You basically stated to me that you 
have, you came up here yesterday. Right, and I have new texts and he, people he didn't believe that I was being stopped. The man, uh, he sent information supposedly to South Central Patrol. And then um, he, yes, I need education on that. Did um, he, whoever sent the text is claiming that the police department is saying that I'm mentally ill? Hello? Okay. Hello? Yeah, I'm here, ma'am. Okay, so if you're um, up to date in my situation, so the per- the text I got today is the party's claiming that he talked to the police department and the de- police department is claiming that I'm mentally ill. Okay, Ms. Clark, you still got those text messages on your phone? Yeah, I do. Okay, all right, so what you can do is say, make sure that you don't delete or, or misplace that phone or those text messages, okay? And then a detective is going to get in contact with you. What? Are you serious? For years I've been waiting on that. You sure? You made a report, right? Yeah, but it, it's been years and they never called me 60-something reports. A report, is going, a report has been documented. Detective what? Been wow, that has not happened before in years. I was also actually getting arrested and detained and assaulted. You got, you got, you got the report number, right? I do. So okay. let me make sure uh, I understand. A detective will get call me for real this time. Yes, if you gave, if you gave me your correct uh, telephone number and contact information, they should be able to get in contact. You no just saying that contact. it's controlled by headquarters. I'll see this when I, be, I believe it when I see it. Okay, so back to the. Um, the mental illness. So supposedly that someone sent information saying that I was mentally ill to you guys and you confirmed that I was mentally ill. Is that true? You say was or was? Yes. Supposedly Jason or the representative of Jason sent um, uh, information to the South Central Patrol. Mm-hmm. And supposedly the South Central Patrol confirmed that I was mentally ill. It's all in regards to the discretion of what the officer and what you present to We can't determine until we talk to you, ma'am. We can't go by just hearsay what others say at that point. Well, I'm just trying to see where the slander is coming from because someone told me that the police department has educated this man that I was mentally ill. So I if you guys been, slandered me, been, that's a lawsuit because you have 60-something reports that you want to investigate backing up my experience. So I need to know if he's lying, who's lying, because I got a text message showing that you guys told him that I was mentally ill. And if you did that, when I do get rights, I'm suing you. Uh, you so I need board? to know I need to know if someone from the South Central Patrol informed this man that I was mentally ill to tamper with evidence. Okay, I'm not familiar with that report. I ain't okay, well, let's check into it. I can hold because I've, I told, informed you guys multiple times that I didn't feel safe when I was getting ran off roads, guns pulled on me, multiple assaults. I've informed you of that, that I don't feel safe. Okay. The multiple false arrests, I don't know who would feel safe in that chaos. Attorneys denying you uh, representation, that's pretty oh, intense. So can you figure out, I need to figure out where the lies and slander come from. And I, you know, if we can figure out how, why the court's lying too. Okay. All of it is, this is a pattern that, you know, a lot of people are not investigating. But anyway, I can hold, can you place me on hold and check and to see uh, if who's lying so I can have, you know, get safe. I want to know if the Dallas Police Department told me, told this man that I was mentally ill. Well, I'm not going to put you on hold, ma'am. I'm just telling you directly, okay? The fact is, I don't know what's going on between we'll, you. We'll find me. out. Find out. I need to yeah. tamper with evidence is a felony. A felony hindering the case is a crime. If you know my life is in jeopardy and this yes, man yes. that's claiming to be innocent is calling behind police departments trying to clear his Clark. tracks. Clark. All right. We have our criteria in regards to what, who is and what is mentally stable, unstable at that point in time. We can't go by exactly in regards to what a third party or whomever is saying in regards to it. No, he's claiming, whoever I got this text from is claiming that the police department said I was mentally ill. So if you guys said that and I, whenever I get civil rights, you're getting sued. So I need okay. to know if you guys told this man that claims he's innocent that I was mentally ill to tamper with evidence and help him get away with his crimes. I need to know that. I need to know I where the know. slander's coming I, from. Who are you receiving the text message? 
I just want to know if South Central Patrol or any doubt if you're aware of any officer telling this man that I was mentally ill. And, and that's why I'm not aware of anybody who, and any of the officers in regards mm. to sending or uh, informing that information to anyone like that. Okay, because I just wanted to know where it's coming from. I know that it's kind of difficult. Like I said, we're working against each other with you trying to cover for all of it and me trying to fight for my life. So it's complicated. But okay, so you guys didn't tell him I was mentally ill and it was just a lie. Could be. I don't know. I wasn't. I wasn't there. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I haven't spoken to Jason. I'm just talking to you, man. Okay. Don't you think it would be easier if, like, out of all this chaos, maybe if I got an investigator that can figure all this out? Well, the investigator is going to be pertaining to in regards to your case numbers in regards to what you say the um, when he's making the I guess lies or the harassment charge. Yeah, but you don't want me to come in and show you the text. You don't want that. Uh, if you already showed the text messages or information to the other officers, there's no need for me. I, I keep repeating myself. No, I didn't. It's new okay. evidence. Well, you can save those information for the investigator in regards to whenever they get in contact with you. I've been waiting years. I hope that they do, but it hasn't been going very well for me to speak with the investigator or get records. Okay, well, there is, like I said, City Dallas, when they said that they gave you a report, the investigator is going to get into the investigator.